Well, it was a much blacker time in the uh, history of the country than most people probably realize now. Uh, it, was, it was generally thought and joked about, but only partly joked, that uh, uh, President Roosevelt would be either the best president the country had ever had or he'd be the last one. And uh, people uh, were, were pretty depressed. Of course, in Washington, we were like in the eye of the storm. We get all these reports the banks were closing and failing and uh, there were panics. And in Washington, we don't get any of that. There was no, no commerce, no factories, and uh, uh, just the government is the, is the key industry. But we would hear about all these things coming in. And uh, things were, were quite gloomy indeed. So. Uh, when uh, President Roosevelt and outgoing President Hoover looked, looking so glum, President Roosevelt looking so happy, drove down the avenue together in that open car to the, uh, to the Capitol for President Roosevelt to take the oath. And he looked as if he were having the time of his life, had a great smile, he was confident he was taking all this over. And uh, as more than one person has said, uh, in addition to, my, to me, myself, uh, the whole thing turned, uh, turned around right then and there right in the avenue, right that day, as an inaugural parade. I did not have a prominent position in the parade. I was on top of the Woolard Hotel roof. Woolard Hotel, I think, is still there. And Ted Husing, who was uh, by then the big ad-lib uh, sports broadcaster, principally football, was considered to be the ad-libber because he ad-lib sports. And so he did things like special events, too. This was a special event. And he had the key position on the steps of the Capitol at the inaugural platform. With, uh, with President Roosevelt. Uh, but uh, that was the last time he did that. From then on, I superseded him, and President Roosevelt had, uh, had us right up there with him, very close to him. He, you know, he, he, he sort of uh, was our godfather. He, he, he's the one that put radio over in the, in the uh, establishment of the government, President Roosevelt did. So that, at that inauguration, I didn't have any particularly uh, exalted position. But, uh, but yes, we all felt it. We all, we, and then the, the president inaugu uh, re-inaugurated, I'm sorry for the pun, none intended, the uh, institution of the inaugural ball, which had been suspended for some reason or another. And while, of course, he, uh, with the after effects of polio, uh, didn't dance and he didn't go to the ball, but Mrs. Roosevelt did, and I did, we broadcasted it that night, and CBS made an announcement, that's ball, that I'd been appointed by CBS as the presidential announcer and would henceforth introduce the president on broadcast in the White House and also on his various trips in the train. And uh, so uh, it was kind of the whole thing was, was a big moment for me.